All right, in this video, we're going to talk about graphing reciprocal functions. So it's a useful skill uh, in particular because you want to move toward graphing something called a rational function. Um, and these are very related concepts. So the reciprocal function to y equals x is y equals 1 over x. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a graph of y equals x and use it to create a graph of y equals 1 over x. And if you understand the basics of that, you kind of understand the basics of graphing reciprocal functions, which are the basics of rational functions. So you're kind of on your way at that point. Uh, I'm going to do a table of values for y equals x, which is kind of a dumb table of values to make. Um, so obviously, uh, negative 2, negative 2, and negative 1, negative 1, and then uh, we get a bunch of others, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2. Could have kept going forever with that one because it's plenty easy. Uh, let's uh, plot those and then graph the function. Okay, so there's y equals x. And what I want to do now is turn my table of values for y equals x into a table of values for y equals 1 over x. So what happens is I take the reciprocal of each of the x values. So instead of just having negative 2, negative 2, I'll have negative 2, negative 1 half. So the reciprocals are going in this table. So negative 2, negative 1 half. The reciprocal of negative 1 is actually negative 1, so nothing exciting. Uh, you can't take the reciprocal of 0, right? Because that's dividing by 0, so that's not going to be in the domain. Um, but 1, 1, and 2, 1 half. Okay, so let's plot some points. So I plot all four of those points. I'm actually going to add two more points. Uh, I'm going to add uh, negative 1 half, negative 2, and then 1 half, 2. So the reciprocal of negative 1 half is negative 2, and the reciprocal of 1 half is 2. So I've added those points just to give it a little more shape. And let's see what happens with this graph. So first of all, if um, we move to the left, so if you're moving toward, the, toward negative infinity from x equals negative 1, the y-coordinates are getting more and more negative, uh, so like negative 10, negative 50, whatever. The reciprocals of those get closer to zero, so that's why the graph looks the way it does there. And kind of an opposite idea occurs as you move from negative 1 toward zero. So as you move from negative 1, the reciprocal is negative 1. Uh, when you get to negative 1 half, the reciprocal is negative 2. When you get to negative 1 tenth, the reciprocal is negative 10. So the y values are shooting down toward negative infinity. You're never going to get to x equals 0, so you just get closer and closer to the y-axis. And then in the positive direction, uh, we have something really similar. So by the same argument, uh, it's going to look like that, right? Because the reciprocal of, say, 1 over 1,000 is 1,000, 1 over 2,000 is 2,000, so it gets closer and closer to the y-axis, but it's never going to get to the y-axis, so it just shoots up to positive infinity there. And then um, when x gets really, really big, the reciprocal gets really, really small, so it's going to hug the x-axis. Okay, so we get these behaviors, and if you take a look, we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. Um, that's the line that it's kind of hugging. And in this region here, where the um, x values are getting very, very small, the reciprocals are getting very, very big. So what I call that, or how I describe that, is as a function approaches 0, so like y equals x was approaching 0 there, um, the reciprocal blows up, so it, it has this behavior where it has a vertical asymptote, and then it's going to go to positive or negative infinity as it approaches that asymptote. And then in these regions, where the function itself is getting really, really big, the reciprocals are going to get really, really small, or we can say that they're going to approach zero. Okay, So that's the behavior of reciprocal functions. That happens all the time. Um, so you just have to get used to it, and you can use it to graph slightly more complicated things. So say we have... Uh, y equals 1 over x squared plus 2x minus 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually find the reciprocal, find everything I can about that, and then turn the graph of the reciprocal into the graph that I want. So I take the reciprocal, I'm going to factor it. Um, from this, I know that the zeros are negative 3 and positive 1. So if I set up my graph like this, I'm going to find the vertex. So the vertex is the average of those, so it's going to be at um, x equals negative 1. And if I take negative 1 and I plug it in, I get negative 4. And so what I can do is plot that and plot the zeros. And then I'm going to try uh, to draw this. So using the y-intercept for a little more shape. And then by symmetry, I should have that. Okay, so that's the graph of the reciprocal. It's not the graph I want, but I'm going to turn it into the graph that I want. So first things first, um, the zeros become vertical asymptotes. So I'm going to dot those in. So I have that. And now I have three, well, I have a lot of points. 
but I already used the zeros. They turned into vertical asymptotes. So I actually have three more points. I'm going to take the reciprocals of those. So negative 1, negative 4 becomes negative 1, negative 1 fourth. And 0, negative 3 becomes 0, negative 1 third, because I'm taking reciprocals of the y coordinates. Um, and then negative 2, negative 3 becomes uh, negative 2, negative 1 third. And now that I have that, I can kind of fill in the graph. So remember I said as you approach 0, as the kind of function approaches 0, the one I have graphed here, as it approaches 0, the reciprocal is going to blow up. So if it's approaching 0, but the values are negative, it's going to blow up to negative infinity. If it's approaching 0, but the values are positive, it's going to approach positive infinity. So in the case where I move in this direction, the blue function is approaching 0, but through negative numbers. So the reciprocal blows up, but toward negative infinity. And then that's actually going to happen in this direction too, right? So the blue function is approaching 0, but through the, po the uh, negative numbers. So the reciprocals blow up toward negative infinity. And then outside of these bars, kind of outside of the vertical asymptotes, we get behavior that looks like this, and we get behavior that looks like this. And if you think about it, that makes sense, because we're taking uh, reciprocals of positive numbers as we get closer to the vertical asymptote at x equals 1. We're taking reciprocals of positive numbers that are um, really tiny, because they're approaching 0, so they blow up to positive infinity. And then as you get farther from the vertical asymptote, at it like 100 or 1,000, the reciprocals approach zero. So this is actually what the graph is going to look like. And uh, I hope you found this helpful. So it has a couple of features that I kind of want to highlight. First of them uh, is the vertical asymptotes. So at x equals negative 3, x equals 1. Um, and then there's also a horizontal asymptote that I just kind of want to highlight for you. So the horizontal asymptote is actually at y equals 0. So that's the line that it approaches as x goes to positive infinity or negative infinity. Um, and that's about it. So I hope you found this helpful and good luck.